So as you can see, we're just getting some aerials on here. Now these are the standard kit part aerials, the little T-shaped ones. And all I've done is cut them off to bring them in line with UK standards. Cut them at a slight angle, just so they're going to be sort of 45 degrees um, as they go down here. And there's only five. So all I did was chop them to length, and then literally we're just popping along here and dropping in a little bit of super glue. I've just got out of shot. Coming along and then doing it. Now I'm not using obviously the holes because the holes will make it wrong. And we're doing it just like so. It's a lot quicker and easier than it would be to mess around trying to sort of bend them up and things like that. So there we go, they're on. So just to make sure they sit nicely. Squirt a kicker. Give it a blow, and this is my magic. They all dry and they should be set. And then what we can do, we've just got some of our tyre black that we've been using quite frankly everywhere on this particular build. Um, it's my new sort of favourite colour because it saves having to add a little bit of uh, a bit on my finger here. Uh, it saves a little bit of putting a bit of grey in there just to take the edge off of it. And so we've got a small brush. In we go, just like so. And then we're just going to paint these in black. So we do half at a time, we do the top half and then come in and do the bottoms. So, so we just pop along these, I'll just put to a couple to show you, like that, and then we would flip over and then just do the other side. And if you use a sort of pushing technique, you shouldn't go too far up. Just do these couple, and I'll finish the others in a moment. And then there we go and then what we'll do we've got another piece of sprue here we'll cut it to the length and then stick it to the side joining up this one and that gives us our perfect antenna farm just like that so we just pop that out of the way the other thing as well you know we sprayed and weathered the actual rail up i think that's looking particularly smart now these have only just been painted so they're still going to be slightly wet but what we're going to do we're going to try and be a little bit clever here uh, we don't want the ramp you know obviously in different positions and all the rest of it so what we're going to do is just drop these ends in a little bit of super glue just like this okay and then we'll poke these in and then hopefully they'll hold and stay i think we need to be honest a little bit more glue than that so we just take a on the edge of a cocktail stick just coming up and then just drop a tiny bit in each Oh, and then we can come in, stick it in just like so. Same with the other side. And then we'll just put that in as well. Okay, then obviously being a bit careful, make sure you haven't got paint over your fingers a bit like I have now. What we do is we can then half line up how it's going to go and before those totally dry in the super glue we can actually bend them in so what i'm going to do i'm just going to run a little bit of glue just down the rear ramp of this that cargo one that we put on and the one we made ourselves okay so that's in there we're just going to pinch these in just a little bit to make sure they don't get in the way okay and then we're going to sit this into place it's all nicely lined up with the bottom and with the top so you can't see anything in the top. I'm just going to hold it and get it to bite just a little bit. And then what we we'll do is we can then, with a pair of tweezers, we can get in there and line up those areas. But it's all going to be square and okay. So we're just holding form just for a moment whilst those bite. And the super glue takes effect now it's a bit there and then what we can do is if we use our tweezers we hopefully can just pop these into the right place inside and so he's trying to look as he does it himself that's one side and then we'll get the other one in so i'll fiddle that with a little bit in a minute but that gives us our the rough area how it's going to be and then any more weathering we can do we can do by hand and just pop in there afterwards to sort that out Okay, so as you can see, we've got the um, aerial, the antenna on there. Um, usual thing, that's just a little bit of styrene rod that I've got, cut to length, and then spot on, and then just give it a quick 
of uh, CA kicker so we can paint that black in a moment and get that on um, just pointing out there we go that's the rear ramp all in and done now so I'm really happy with the way that that's going on so what we can actually do now is start popping in those windows that we had before we're going to get them all fixed in and all done then we can just go around and do a little bit more weather and picking out little bits of silvering and things like that and we can go and get all these aerials on now these aerials there's no point going through because it'll take forever it's pretty much straightforward um, but check your references it does seem to be that every type of Chinook has a different aerial layout certainly the RAF ones check between different variants because they have different types as well and there's various brackets and things I'll point them out once I've got them all on and I can show you when it's on but I'm not going to sort of you know bore you to death by because it it's going to take you know, probably about an hour to get all these aerials on so I'm going to use a bit of super glue poke them on let them set paint them once they're on there a bit easier and then we can work them away right the way around underneath obviously there's lots of them and the cargo area right then so that's all the the aerials actually put on so if we show you what we've got on here obviously we've got the front ones on uh, my mistake forgot to put the hole in there so but it's pretty easy to do. just cut off the back and angle them in um, use a tiny bit of super glue to tack it into position and then went round it with some extra thin just to weld it in if you like so that's those in underneath as you can see loads of aerials now um, a bit of a thing to this um, look at five photos of Chinooks, you get five different aerial layouts. I think it varies through different stages or who they're with um, and various squadrons. Um, obviously they swap around Chinooks and have different things for them. Basic one is the long bar running down the starboard side um, of the aircraft from the basically the front wheel back. Easy one to line that up. And then after that, check your references to see how they actually go. But that's basically on. And then obviously we've got the blade antenna on the top. There again, some of them have some more. There's one in particular, Chinook's got loads of aerials all over it obviously used for different things. Now what we're doing at this precise moment, basically just bringing it all together now. So what we've actually got, if I bring you in here a little bit, just down here we've got the, the actual door. So what I'm doing is experimenting with a little bit of plastic hard. By bending it, keep rolling it in my fingers and pushing it, I've got it pretty much to conform to the right shape. So using um, the kit part uh, that we actually cut out, which is pretty thick and quite hard to thin down because of its shape. I've managed to do this one to get it to the right type of shape and standard. So what we've made here is a couple of L-shaped brackets out of plastic card um, that we've got just down here. Move that one out of the way, you can see it. These L-shaped ones like this, all they are tucked in, super glued and hold into place. And then these new ones, the new door will just clip on right over the top. So if we just give this a tiny bit of glue, I'm going to use super glue because it's great for holding in position. The big thing is you don't want too much. If you've got too much on there, it takes too long to dry and so forth. So all we do, we come along with the door, stick him on top, and then we just hold him here for a few moments for him just to dry into position like that. And that gives us our open door uh, effect which is something like this. So by the time we paint him in, he'll be just like the real thing. We won't notice any different. So that's that one. So we've got to do the same to the other side for the battery compartment in here as well. But that really um, finishes off that little bit. So really, we're all together. What we're doing now is just getting in the actual uh, main hook. Um, this is Tamiya um, XF4, which is a great sort of that sort of industrial um, sort of interior green, yellow color. And that's simply going to clip up underneath uh, just into the bay just in here like that once it's dry we can paint that up and away we go and then what we've got drying over here is the plate uh, the cover plate which slides back and forth and all this has been done it's still wet it's only just gone on there is a squirt of the old sand wash um, letting that dry and then that'll stick straight up underneath into position underneath the Chinook and away we go just like that. So that's really the final thing. Oh, one more thing is the uh, washer um, blades, the wiper blades, they're on the front as well. Um, you don't get a third one in the kit for some unknown reason, so I'm going to scratch build just a little one just to go in there for the centre window as well. So there again, sand wash just on the top there, um, and then what we'll do, we'll just come along with a clean cotton bud or q-tip or just give it a bit of a wipe down because we've got too much on there just take off the excess just to give them that sort of weathered look there we go so we'll make a third just for the inside but that gives that nice bit of weathering same thing again where we've used any um, pure green paint um, with the model 
um, obviously touching it like when we painted up the front of the aerials and various things like that all we did on the brush a little bit of sand wash just dab over it let the capillary action work its way around and leave it and if it's a little bit too much obviously you can come around then and uh, wipe it off but that's the thing too it's just to keep it all weathered in so it's all looking the same obviously in reality perhaps new panels get on exchange panels from different aircraft things like that general maintenance um, it will clear bits and pieces up with it but it's a nice way of uh, sort of keeping it all looking that sort of muted dusted down dirty color as we've done here so I'll get these other doors just put on and there we go finished off rotor system pot on top got a little light just down here at the back here which is a little bit of sprue just sanded it basically uh, to a point flattened it off a bit cut it off the sprue and then attached it still a little bit wet it's gonna have a do uh, drop a little bit of clear blue on there just for the actual um, formation light just like that all the other bits and pieces are now on um, obviously the rotor heads fit normal thing haven't fixed them so obviously they can come off to make it a little bit easier when it's transportation um if i just whip them off now I'll just show you some of the bits we've done obviously we've gone around and we've painted up um the, the inside bits here uh, we put a little um the actual uh, holder arm uh, that uh, holds up the bay painted the inside of the doors and at the back and as i say a little bit of weathering wash just on the top there um, to finish those bits off and get those all nicely done but there we go it's all finished off it's a bit of a mammoth one to do um, if you're going to detail it the way we did do it um, because obviously there's lots of various things you can actually do and it's knowing when to stop at them um, you know obviously the refueling bay I like to do it I like the look of it when I saw it at the real thing and I wanted to sort of recreate as best I can um, this in here with obviously you know limited space and references and things like that so that was that the one done quite a nice one to do these other front bays um, as I say this one here isn't opened up too much the other one is because it's got the main battery in there um, there is aftermarket sets out there certainly um, the Italia area one um, comes with all the resin bits and pieces very expensive it's the same price as the kit for what you get um, obviously I didn't use it here when we scratch built um, you know around the back here we've got the IR jammers and the things like that and you don't really have to and by sort of customizing a little bit of scratch building down here for these uh, flare uh, and chaff pods and things like that you can do it yourself certainly interior detail a lot of that wiring that we did um, around the front here has been lost to a certain degree because of the thickness of the glass you can see some of the hoses going on uh, down in there but certainly it's very hard to see them because it is very thick there again if you'd spent a lot of money perhaps with um, certainly instrument panels and things like that uh, the trouble is when you look down in there you can't actually see them um, slight drawback um, even through looking in through the back it's very hard to sort of pick them out um, you know when you are looking down in there but anyway, it was a great build, lots and lots of fun to do. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was lovely to go up there and meet the guys who actually fly these things and all the rest of it and to get those fantastic reference shots as we did. Thanks a lot to those. Thanks a lot for Larry for all the references he sent me from down um, from 27 Squadron and things like that. Thanks a lot for watching and join us next time.